these biological effects literally changes the experiencer's DNA and how their body functions. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're stoked to announce a series of videos focusing on the biological aspects of the UAP phenomenon with our resident PhD student Katarina. And we're happy to start and continue this discussion with the broader population because at one point, this was the furthest thing away from potential disclosure. But now, we're being exposed to countless papers, first-hand testimony, and long-awaited epiphanies in the scientific realm. Hi! Thank you for having me. I had such a wonderful time at Huntsville, and I was lucky enough to attend the Second Seoul Symposium in 2024, as well as the DC hearing on November 14th, 2024. I'm excited that I can bring my biological knowledge to this podcast! And it is nice that you've jumped headfirst into this because I think any curious person would consider this the greatest story in the history of humankind. And especially as someone in a fantastically relevant field, I can see why you want in and you want in now. But I should also say you've mentioned that you've only recently came into the world of UAP. So briefly, how did that start? Well, my PhD research is looking at how the altered regulation of a signaling link pathway called PI3 kinase contributes to human cancer. One of my best friends mentioned meeting Gary Nolan, who is a cancer immunologist. He had met him at the 2023 Seoul Symposium, and from that, I was introduced to the world of UAP. A bit later, I found out that my mom is an experiencer. She told me about the experiences previously, but I didn't make that connection that it was UAP until I learned more about it. That's really interesting and almost amusing how things just play out. Some would even call that a synchronicity. But anyways, you wanted to discuss some of the biological aspects of the UAP phenomenon. Absolutely! The first topic I wanted to cover is the molecular mechanisms behind the radiation-like symptoms discussed from credible UAP sources. Firstly, Lou Elizondo's book, released in 2023, titled Eminent, this topic of radiation-like symptoms was discussed extensively. Specifically, in Chapter 2, Lou describes the Colaris Incident, which was a series of UAP sightings in 1977 on the Brazilian island of Colaris. The Brazilian Air Force investigated the event, which involved claims that NHI attacked people with beams of radiation. The Brazilian government initially classified the files, but eventually released them to the public. These victims experienced a large range of symptoms, such as extreme headaches, temporary blindness, vision issues, hearing loss, prolonged nausea and vomiting, radiation burns and skin rashes, and even internal organ damage, such as heart tissue scarring. Radiation-like exposure kills the cells, which are the basic building blocks of tissues and organs in our bodies. Death and damage to our body's different cell types, such as retinal cells in the eyes, brain cells, skin cells, nerve cells can lead to degradation of those body parts. This explains the variety of symptoms across patients, because exposure time and exposure locations can have an effect on what symptoms people develop. For example, one of the patients was a woman who had an orb pass through her chest, and later she developed breast cancer. Correlation does not imply causation, but combined with the other radiation-like symptoms and evidence we have so far, I would hypothesize that the orb exposure did cause cancer. And on a molecular level, radiation can cause DNA damage due to its ability to ionize atoms and molecules within cells. It can strike the DNA molecules directly, breaking the chemical bonds or indirectly by affecting other molecules such as water. Since cells are composed of approximately 70% water, radiation can generate highly free radicals. These free radicals, in turn, interact with DNA, disrupting its function and sometimes leading to degradation or harmful mutations. And mutations are errors in an organism's DNA, which affects the protein it, it produces. So these errors can lead to diseases such as cancer, which is the focus of my research. Wow. And so to be clear, when anything emits energy or particles, that's radiation. So even bananas are slightly radioactive because they contain potassium, and that's a naturally occurring radioactive element. But when we look at high energy emissions, things get dangerous, 
because that energy can affect surrounding particles and cause changes at the atomic level, like ionizing atoms. That's when radioactive material can give off so much energy that as soon as it hits other atoms, it literally knocks off the electrons that are spinning around inside of them. And in fact, I remember our previous episode where Missile Man briefly discussed the nature of gravity bubbles and how photons might get reflected off of them at higher frequencies, causing them to shift into ionizing radiation. When light goes through that bubble, once it leaves the bubble, does it pick up speed? You know, uh, it, maybe you could, you know, if you see weird, weird, yeah, I don't know. Who knows what you would see, but it, that is yeah. interesting. I had a conversation with Bob McGuire along these lines, actually, when, so Jesse and I interviewed, Jesse Michaels and I interviewed Bob McGuire um, a couple of days after the house hearing. What happens when a photon hits a, hits a, a Tic Tac and comes back at you? Because I've had this theory that maybe this is, could be part of the source of radiation burns that people experience when they're really close to a UFO under some circumstances, but not others. I thought, well, maybe when they're when they're switching modes or something, or they're they're you know accelerating or decelerating or turning on or off the engine or whatever, that there's a transient state where incident electromagnetic photons on the gravity bubble get reflected back at you, blue shifted, and so maybe they get blue shifted up into ionizing radiation, and so they harm you. Maybe they're, maybe they're visible light photons, maybe they're Wi-Fi photons, whatever they might be. So. In other words, when UAP emit high energy forms of radiation or ionizing radiation, it can change so much at the atomic level that it can literally rip DNA strands apart, right? Yeah, exactly. Those high energy particles collide with DNA molecules and that breaks apart the genetic code within a cell. Sheesh. Uh, what I guess is really shocking is that these accounts of UAP related damage isn't limited to people in remote places. If we look at the historic cases, our servicemen and women are directly affected by this. And honestly, it's almost infuriating because it's extensively documented. Yeah. In an interview with GQ magazine, Lou also detailed more symptoms from pilots. He said that one pilot was hospitalized with symptoms suggesting microwave damage, specifically internal injuries and within the brain. Another pilot said that he had symptoms of radiation burns after flying close to an unidentified object. And most recently, an interview was released on January 18th, 2025 with Ross Coltar and another whistleblower, Jake Barber. Jake Barber is a U.S. Air Force veteran and pilot who claimed to have recovered craft of non-human origin. In the interview, he describes how he and his team were transporting a large sealed container, and they had no idea what was in it. However, after this mission, Jake and his team became extremely sick and hospitalized, similar to the pilot accounts previously described by Lou. Jake lost hair, both on his head and his body, and the skin on his arms was, quote, lopping off his body, like a severe sunburn. He also developed a severe heart murmur that he hadn't ever had before. Had we known what was in that box, we would have, there would have, we have a protocol for dealing with nuclear hazmat, and, and none of that was in place, and I still got exposed. The fact of seeking medical treatment afterwards, I couldn't talk about what had happened, so therefore, the causation was really difficult for doctors to, to like to come up with. There was there was symptomology without causation. Um, what were all of the symptoms that you experienced? So like I end up now. I mean, I have a heart murmur that I never had before. Wow. Okay, so my heart's messed up. Uh, I, again, I lost all the hair on my body. I look like just a albino lizard. I had rashes. Uh, my immune system seems compromised in some way. That I can't explain. I, I just have random. Uh, autoimmune disorders and and so this was where Gary has come in handy is that he's reviewed my medical records and we're trying to make sense of 20 years of things that have happened when Gary took a look at your you know physical chart and the symptoms did he say they accorded with other UFO experiencers yes. yeah he did specifically what's the guy from Rendlesham Forest in 1980 um, John Burroughs. John Burroughs and Jim Penniston. We yeah. have the same heart issue. Oh, wow. They yeah, didn't he's... exist before Damn. in either of us. Following this, 
Ross introduced Jake to Gary Nolan, a professor at Stanford, who I mentioned earlier, and he's been studying anomalous injuries. Gary reported that the symptoms Jake Barber experienced are similar to radiation damage. So when you synthesize all these in incidents together, there's evidence supporting the hypothesis that exposure to UAP materials or crafts causes these radiation-like symptoms. And honestly, it's not like the government is unaware of this. Whatever could you mean? There was a DIA report and classified in 2022 titled, quote, Anomalous Acute and Subacute Field Effects on Human and Biological Tissues. And that described health injuries that occurred to people who experienced anomalous aerospace related events. So this document lists symptoms such as thermally induced heat and burn injuries, neurological effects, and cardiac palpitations. So these symptoms are close to injuries the Colaris victims and past pilots have had. The report also mentions how radiation, as I described, and electromagnetic radiation, even at low levels, can change the ability of cells to properly function, potentially due to DNA damage. Wow. All that sounds like, you know, we're like babies playing with a gun. Um, we have no idea what we're dealing with and we're just throwing people at it, trying to recover it, trying to handle it. Um, and it seems like such a mess. Yep, that's how, I, how exactly how I would describe it. Because as with many UAP topics, it always shocks me that the government has been sitting on this information for so long. And it leaves me wondering why this information has been hidden from the public. Because these biological effects literally changes the experiencer's DNA and how their body functions. Like, it impacts their lives. So I really hope that disclosure brings more awareness to this topic. Yeah, I assume that people can really run with this and start imagining all these different ramifications that can come from experiencers DNA being changed in this manner. Uh, and it seems like this is one part of the Pandora's box that the institutions are deathly afraid to discuss because it implies we were knowingly harming our service people and are still knowingly harming our service people. It would be a heinous admission. But anyways, without going on my monologue, we're going to bring you back to discuss more of the biological aspects, such as cattle mutilations, the hypothetical physiology of non-human intelligence, uh, evolution trees, and even the brain and its seemingly emerging connection to psi phenomenon. Thank you so much for having me. It was an absolute pleasure to be here, and I'm really excited to explore these different biological perspectives in the future with you and our viewers soon. And I'm keeping my eyes wide open in the future for what happens next in the UAP world. Thanks everybody for watching and stay tuned.